Hello and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Ariel and today we are at Walla Walla, Washington at the Whitman Mission National Historic Site. Now a description about this site, according to the book, are missionaries Narcasa, I'm pronouncing that really badly, Nar, Nar, Narcissa, and Marcus Whitman traveled across the continent in 1836 to establish a mission here. A measles outbreak in 1847 killed half of the local KU's people and Dr. and Mrs. Whitman were killed in retaliation. Oh, I guess they thought they did. <laughs> they brought the measles with them. The deaths prompted Congress to make Oregon a U.S. territory. Hmm. They won the battle but did not win the war. Very sad. All right, let's take a look around. It's, it doesn't look like a very big National Historic Park, which is fine. It's probably just their old farmyard area. There's a trail that goes through here. Oh look, a wagon in the distance. Probably this was part of the Oregon Trail, I'm guessing. But we'll find out more once we go into the visitor center. Program today, conflict at the grist mill. It's 10 o'clock now, so 30 minutes. Someone changed the year. I think it was a kid. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to Whitman Mission National Historic Site. My name is Ranger Chris and I'm very happy to have you here today. My All right, so we're going to go down this trail to the original mission site and we're going to go see where Marcus Whitman had his second and third mill sites. So if you would please follow me. It, in a way, broke their laws of tamal with. So kind of thinking uh, in the back of your mind, what would happen if you went into a foreign country and broke their laws? We do it all the time. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> but it can be the case sometimes. So, in addition to his first mill, he would build his second and third mills at the uh, site right here where those mounds are. And he would also divert water. As you were coming in, you saw that ditch where we have our plastic at the moment. That was an irrigation ditch. He would use um, that to bring water from Doan Creek and Mill Creek and farm that whole area out there that you came um, by driving in. He would divert water from Doan Creek and Mill Creek to make his mill pond. And he would harness water as a power source rather than as a life source. So. Although um, the Whitmans can feed their family for about a week in what uh, they could grind here at the uh, mill site, it was still going against Tamalwit and the laws of the KU's people. All right. So, again, in the back of your minds, think of this question. How has trust affected how you see an event or how you interpret an event happening in your life? So in 1840, uh, the second mill is going to be built here on the site and he's going to get his mill pond up and running. And two years later, in 1842, that mill is going to burn down. Marcus Whitman is already gone um, back east of Boston. He's trying to secure funding for his mission site here. And Narcissa, feeling uncomfortable here by herself, has gone to the Dales in Oregon um, not feeling that she was safe here by herself and left the mission site in the hands of a man named Archibald McKinley. After the mill burns down, she receives a letter from Archibald. 
he blames the KU's people for burning down the mill. Whether this happened or not, we do not know. We do know that there was at least an accident. A boy by the na name of Tamsucky um, is reported to have been down here on the Walla Walla River fishing one night with friends. And of course, you need a light source sometimes to find your way. So prospectively, they had um, a torch. And as kids will do, um, they'll leave things behind and prospectively left the torch behind. And unfortunately, that fire spread and hit the grist mill, burning the grist mill and about 200 bushels of wheat and corn, lumber, and flour. Tila Kite, the leader of the uh, uh, band of KU's people who camped um, just over this way, while you're walking today, you'll see a red barn off to our east. That's about where the campsite of the uh, KU's people were. He would come and he would uh, apologize um, to the uh, Archibald McKinley and the Whitmans. The father of Tamsucky would also come and apologize, and it's reported that Tamsucky was so beside himself uh, that he would even beat his son uh, as punishment for burning down the mill and possibly creating bad um, trust between the Whitmans and the Cayuse people. In a letter back home, Narcissa would write that um, she did believe it was an accident, but she was reluctant to believe it was an accident. She did not trust the KU's people, despite all the reasons that they gave for the, um, the Whitmans to trust them. The mill burning did not help, and would not help in the future. In matter of fact, in her letter, even though she claims that she believes it's an accident, she would treat the KU's as though they were children, children who needed to be disciplined. She would write, the sensible part of the KU's feel the loss deeply and they will still feel it more when they want their wheat ground next fall. I hope it will be a good lesson to them and be the means of making them a better people. Not really something you say to somebody who you feel is on your level, right? So from this, the um, tensions are going to start building more and more, and these are just the stepping stones to building up to the events of 1847. So following his return from Boston to secure the mission's funding from the um, ABCFM, the Whitmans begin to um, shift their focus from their missionary work to focusing on the immigrants coming out here. In the time that the mission was out here, there were enough immigrants coming through to fill up half of Staple um, uh, Stadium in LA today where the LA Kings play. So you can imagine half a whole hockey arena coming through this area. He's going to focus on farming uh, to feed the uh, immigrants coming through. He's going to have a blacksmith shop. He's going to have an emigrant uh, house where immigrants can come and they can stay. And unfortunately, he's going to start neglecting his missionary work. Now remember that the missionaries were brought out here specifically to be uh, with the KU's people, teach them about Christianity, and teach them um, their ways and hopefully have a reciprocal relationship um, with them. Prospectively, before they came out here, there was a um, deal struck that the missionaries were supposed to pay a kind of rent to the KU's people to say, we are on your land and here is...
This in terror is when you don't wash your hands after you go shit. All right, as I leave the Whitman Mission National Historic Site, to me it just proves how missionaries who impose their beliefs, their politics, their religion on other people are essentially wrong. They, they, they all should die, just like the Whitman. All right, this was the extent of their RV parking here. You can fit two rigs in here. This is... I don't understand why this would be a stop in the Fantasy RV tour. I'm here after the tour and you can only fit two rigs in here. Why is this in the tour? Alright, we are at the Richland Pasquillo... I don't know. Anyway, Richland KOA and we are at spot 42 which is not really a site I reserved because I reserved a 60 foot lot or RV pad and we didn't get that so if you're here do not at, do not get space 42 and here's the reason why here's the end of the pad here and there's the end of the pad there there is not enough room for the truck so the truck is parked on the other side of this building which is the reserved parking space all right I do like the setup it's all gravel and we are completely leveled left and right we did not have to do any any pads whatsoever or any blocks and there is this nice shade tree for the morning sun grassy area here it's been too hot to actually use the outdoor space it's was 103 yesterday it's 102 today here's our setup water in water out 50 amps and the uh, shade has been out since we got here and again really no space here we're at the end cap it's really pretty because I look out in these little bushes but the truck will not fit in this space that's why I am parked somewhere else and I really don't care for it other than the fact that I can't park the truck here one space over would have been a little bit nicer but the nice thing is we're at the very front of the, the park and anyone coming through the park right now sees Wandering Wanda. So good and bad, it's got advertising. Would we stay in this park again? Oh, it's a definite yes. It's a clean park. The restrooms are clean and they have a brand new space over here with their premier premium parking spaces the rest of the park is pretty nice a lot of it is back in they've got this row here and the next row over for pull through so it's a nice park we'd stay here again laundry room in this koa Wash is $1.50 for 30 minutes and dry is $1.50 for 45 minutes. Actually a good price. The only deficiency in this laundry room is that there is no folding tables. Oh, there's the name of it. It's Pasco Tri-Cities KOA. It's a nice park. Freeway is right there, but I do not hear it at all. No freeway noise whatsoever. And Camping World is the other side of that KOA sign. The other side of the freeway. 